بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الفهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك ونر علينا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحم الحمد لله we have to fear to continue our reflections on سورة طه we reached the verse 36 but the last few verses of last week we want to reflect more as i said you know there are important points about tasbih so let us go back to the dua of prophet musa alayhi salam and then we continue we said that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to musa idhab ila fir'aun idhab is for one person singular you musa go to fir'aun innahu taqa he has gone out of the limit is has become inordinate but musa alayhi salam then asked for few things some of the things are the things that he needed in himself some changes some improvements some supports internally and also certain things externally for example for his own self improvement qal rabb ishrah li sadri sharh sadri something inside yassir li amri can be inside and outside wahlul uqdata min lisani is inside yafqahu qawli waj'al li waziran min ahli is outside Harun akhi we talked about ushtud bihi azri wa ashriku fi amri alhamdulillah there were some important points about this is not just a helper it's not just someone who is an assistant is a partner he's going to be a partner then what is very interesting is that he doesn't say so that we can convince pharaoh or we can save bani israel or we can defeat pharaoh we can succeed in our revolution and our you know uh, socio political work he doesn't speak in this way he he uses a very theological mystical expression kay nusabbihaka kathiran wa nadhkuraka kathira i ask for all these things so that we can do better tasbih we can glorify you more we can remember you more and better not only me meaning Musa and Harun maybe mean the whole Bani Israel if a society a community makes progress in facing ethical challenges if a society can stop injustice can liberate oppressed people and give them dignified you know free life then this is a society in which tasbih can be done better because tasbih is not just to say subhanallah you should be reflecting in your personal and social life 
beauties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you should let our life, human life, which is because of our misbehavior or mismanagement, not reflecting perfection of God, per, per, uh, reflect the perfection better. This is the meaning of tasbih. If you want to understand better, please refer to the lectures on tasbih or the book Tasbih of Lady, where we have a section on tasbih in a general way. So anything you do to improve the quality of your life or life of other people is a practical tasbih. إِنَّكَ كُنْتَ بِنَا بَصِيرًا You have been very much aware as watching us. Of course, you know, for human beings, when someone is watching, has very strong and very detailed knowledge. Therefore, we use vision for a kind of knowledge which is very strong, very detailed, very influential. Allah's knowledge is more than, you know, our vision. But it's the way we, you know, use the concept of Basir and Sami. <inaudible> you have been fully aware of us. And also, as some people have said, you have also been aware that how much we love to remember you and glorify you. This dua matches the way we have lived so far. You know, if I have been remembering Allah and I say, you know, help me to remember you more, then this dua is more likely to be answered than someone that without any background, without any sign of commitment in the past, all of a sudden wants to change. Qala qad Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, O oh Musa, one of the things we said is that Allah repeatedly mentions Musa by his first name. Musa. We had several times. It's a very friendly, very comforting relation. O oh Musa, you have been given your request. Although there were several requests, but it's like a package. He made it as a package. I need these things. Please help me with these things so that I can be successful in my vision, mission and service. So Allah says, you have been granted what you asked for. But in order to also give you more peace of mind and to remind you of similar things in the past you should know that this is not the only time that we are showing you our you know love and generosity and support this time you asked but we supported you even when you were not in a position to ask. وَلَقَدْ مَنَنَّا عَلَيْكَ مَرَّةً أُخْرَى Truly, we have had great blessings upon you. And we have, you know, shown our favors to you another time. This is not the first time. You know, especially to give peace of mind is very important. You know, if someone is very worried, say, you know, don't worry. In the past also, we saved you, we helped you. At that time, you were more vulnerable. Even your very life was in danger. Now, you are concerned about success in the mission. Although, life is always, you know, um, subject to you know threats but right now the main thing for Musa was mission but there was a time that even his survival was very much in danger 
إذ أوحينا إلى أمك ما يوحى When we communicated to your mother Wahy literally means quick and secret communication It has to be quick and secret Wahy then it can be used for inspiration, it can be used even for prophetic revelation. But literally means this. So mother of Musa was not a prophet or prophet, but she was inspired by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِذْ أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَىٰ أُمِّكْ مَا يُوحَى What is possible or what was supposed to be communicated Allah doesn't here specify what was needed some of it is mentioned here maybe there are more so it came to the heart of mother of Musa as a kind of inspiration but she must have felt comfortable somehow in the sense that it was not just something that occurred to her mind like for example you know if you are in a very high building and there's fire it may come to your mind that from the 20th floor, uh, floor I should you know jump out it may come to your mind, but this doesn't mean that it's inspiration. <laughs> you may do this and get killed. So it's not that just occurred to the mind of and heart of the mother of Musa, put her in a gasket and sent her to the river. No. It was an inspiration. So it must bring some light, some kind of positive feelings must be accompanying this thought so that she realized this from God she realized this inspiration otherwise no mother would be you know throwing his son or sorry her son to the river so this is part of our Haina. So, put Musa into the river and then it will bring it to the bank of the river or to the shore of the river. So, it's not going to remain in the river and die. It's going to die out of thirst and hunger. No. Soon, he will be picked up. By whom? Adovun li wa adovun la. An enemy of Musa and my enemy. Pharaoh had enmity with Musa because, based on his dream, he knew that the savior of Bani Israel is going to be born. And he was, you know, killing all the boys of Bani Israel because he wanted to kill Musa. So if someone is killing people in order to kill you is <laughs> very clear enemy and was an enemy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of all the injustice mischief he was doing and all the other things so maybe I guess based on the location of where the mother of Musa was going to throw the gasket into the river and knowing that the palace of Pharaoh is further down she realized that if she sends the Musa then Musa will be picked up so if the river had even different branches the branch that was going next to the palace was the one that Musa went through and 
also sister of Musa alayhi salam was escorting but on the bank seeing you know where this is going to inform mother and you know everyone that where is Musa leading and what happened to Musa so she was also somehow inspired to do this but not necessarily divine inspiration maybe this was more natural in the case of mother was divine inspiration certainly because it's not common to send to the river but follow some thing which is in the river and important for you can be natural instinct so adobun li wa la then allah says to musa and maybe this was not in the communication to the mother because the language is changed now we call it التفات وَأَلْقَيْتُ عَلَيْكَ مَحَبَّةً مِنِّي Now Allah talks to Musa. Up to here, Allah was talking to the mother of Musa. اِقْذَفِي أَنْ اِقْذَفِي فِي التَّابُوتِ فَاقْذَفِي فِي الْيَامْ فَالْيَأْخُذُ فَالْيُلْغِهِ الْيَامُ بِالصَّاحِلِ يَأْخُذُهُ عَدُوبٌ لِي وَعَدُوبٌ لَهُ Referring to Musa as third party. But now Allah talks to Musa. وَأَلْقَيْتُ عَلَيْكَ مَحَبَّةً مِنِّي I projected some love from me on you. Means I made you lovable. Even Pharaoh with his hard heart when looked at Musa as a baby loved Musa. If he didn't love Musa, would not listen to Lady Asiya, you know, uh, let us adopt him as our child. Musa became very lovable. Allah does this with muttaqin. Makes them lovable, makes, endears them to people. Sorry, someone is trying to call me. So, Al-Qaytu alayka mahabbatan minni. Allah made it for Musa in a very special way. Because normally a muttaqi, you know, takes time till develops taqwa and the signs of iman, you know, appear and, you know, attraction of iman appears. But Allah made this for Musa from the very beginning of his childhood. And in order to build you before my eyes. So Allah wanted Musa to be brought up while Allah is completely watching him. This has a special meaning because Allah is watching everything. Allah is aware of everything. Good people, bad people, good tarbiya, bad tarbiya. But to be built, to be formed in my sight means Allah has a special plan for tarbiyah of Musa. Like, for example, tarbiyah of Lady Maryam, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. nabatan hasan. So Allah was taking care of tarbiyah of Maryam, sallallahu alayhi wa Also here, Allah is taking care of tarbiyah of Musa, alayhi wa But Allah uses his agents, and sometimes Allah can use even a bad person to protect a child that he wants to upbring or to train a child that he's going to upbring. Certainly, being with Pharaoh and in the palace of Pharaoh had some challenges, 
but also had positive role for future mission of Musa alayhi salam. Inshallah, at the end of the story of Musa, I will give you a narration based on Makaru wa Bakar Allah, how Allah planned and Fir'aun planned, and Allah's plan is you know, greater in the sense that takes the plan of Fir'aun into his plan. And Fir'aun and his plan and his agents become agents of Allah. Inshallah, we'll explain this as we have explained some acquired courses. But let us continue the story and then inshallah we'll do this. So Allah says to Musa, another time also we had favor upon you. Not that you asked and we gave. No, you were not in position to ask your child. But we had favor upon you. We had some special arrangement for your upbringing. Is Tamshi Ochtuk Fatakul Hal Adulukum Alaman Yakfulu? The sister of Prophet Musa was walking, so the river was not very, you know, the uh, very fast. I mean, the water was not moving very fast. So she didn't need to run. She was walking. Tamshi. From this we can understand that it was not very, you know, fast current. So with normal walking, she was able to escort and then so that Pharaoh and his wife and, you know, maybe she didn't know who are these people exactly. But she saw some people are adopting the, you know, taking the child from the river. And as we know from other sources, uh, no lady was able to foster him. They knew that someone must foster this newborn baby. But she was, he was not accepting. And they were desperate what to do. Anyone available. And at that time, you know, it was not like today, you know, you, you had lots of artificial, you know, food, etc. So, a source of rescue came. Sister of Musa, without saying I am his sister, said, Hal adullukum ala man Shall I guide you? towards people that they can take care of this baby for you. You know, it's not easy to have a newborn baby, especially if needs, you know, someone to foster. If the mother is fostering, it's easier. Pharaoh and his wife certainly need some people to help. So that I can show you some people that can look after this baby, foster, clean, I don't know, whatever, a sleeping, sitting. And they said, yes, they had no other choice. And they saw that, you know, Musa accepted to eat uh, and drink the milk uh, from this lady who was his mother. So Allah says, فَرَجَعَنَاكَ إِلَىٰ أُمِّكَ So we returned you, sent you back to your mother. But not back to your home. You are not supposed to be brought up in the same house. Location and setting has to change. F food remains the same. It's milk of your mother. Your mother is going to foster you. Your sister, you know, all will be with you, inshallah. Uh, uh, based on, you know, uh, my reading, it seems that it's not just the mother. Ahle Bayten. Yakful. So the family was reunited without informing anyone, you know, in the side of Pharaoh that we are the family of Musa. So the family was reunited. 
mother was looking after her baby. So mother was happy, baby was happy, everyone was happy, but in a totally different environment, in the palace of Pharaoh, and with an additional support, which is mother, like a new mother, Lady Asiya, wife of Pharaoh, who is very pious lady, very special lady. So Musa has no like two mothers one is her biological mother who is also a very nice lady but lady asia that might be even more spiritual more pious than the mother of musa because she's one of the chosen ladies of the world lady asia she's a role model she's an example Look at the way Allah supported Musa. And look at the way a crisis led to a great opportunity. So we should always be hopeful. As we said before, you know, even, especially when there is no sign of hope. When you have no hope, you should be more hopeful. Because maybe Allah is going to intervene. كَيْ تَقَرَّ عَيْنُهَا وَلَا تَحْزَنَ So that her eyes will be comforted and she would not worry. Some people said her eyes might be refreshed or rejoice. And do, uh, she would not grief, uh, have grief. She would not grieve. And another time, this was not the only time. nafsan. And another time, فَلَبِسْتَ السَّنِينَ فِي أَهْلِ مَدْيًا ثُمَّ جِئْتَ عَلَىٰ قَدَرٍ يَا مُوسَىٰ Then you came here and I started talking to you and give you this mission. It's all عَلَىٰ قَدَر. It's all planned. Because I would want to uh, speak more about uh, the second part of ayah, so I stop here. I don't want to uh, miss some of the points. So we uh, stop with wala tahzana, and inshallah we resume from here. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعلى محمد وعلى محمد وعلى محمد